It is Bucks week, and we all know that the Saints have owned Tom Brady since he came to Tampa Bay in 2020, winning four out of five meetings. And to talk about it, we're joined by Ross Jackson, who's the host on Locked on Saints podcast. And Ross, you know, it's an exciting week, but first, I want to talk about a few things. I want to talk about the line of scrimmage with the Saints. It seems like they struggled a bit. We're going to start with the offensive line. They had gave up four sacks against Atlanta. How do you think that they played? Played and, and kind of looked like they struggled a little bit in a run game besides the Taysom Hill run. I don't know that I'm necessarily concerned about the offensive line in terms of the personnel, but certainly about identification. That's going to be the next big factor for the Saints to be able to get right going up against Tampa. It seems that maybe there were instances in which they expected pressure to come from somewhere that it didn't, and so that ends up having you shift your offensive line. It impacts where you believe the middle of the defense to be, all of that. So it makes it a little bit tough to be able to stick with your protections, your assignments, when you're effectively identifying where pressure isn't coming from as opposed to accurately, accurately identifying where it comes from. So as long as the Saints are able to get sort of the mental side of it right, they should be in a better place. But they're going to need that because this Tampa Bay Bucks front seven and pressure much better than what the Atlanta Falcons have been able to put on the field in recent years. Jameis this week also talked about just getting the communication right, getting everybody on the same page. Do you think it's as simple as that where it's the linebacker, I mean, it's the running backs picking up the blitz? It's him calling the plays at the line. It's him getting the ball out quicker. Yeah, I think there's something to be said about the pace for sure. But regardless, the protection has to be able to hold up. So it comes down to him and Eric McCoy, who are making the calls at the line of scrimmage, being accurate and being uh, sort of pinpoint in terms of where that pressure is coming from, what the middle of the defense actually is, and where you might see pressure manufactured from second-level players like linebackers or third-level players like defensive backs that might be coming off the edge, which is something that Todd Bowles and that Tampa Bay Bucks defense love to do. Earlier, you mentioned the offense kind of getting in a rhythm in the fourth quarter. What did you see there, and what was all the problems there for the first three quarters? It looked like they couldn't get anything going. Yeah, look, I, I think that for most of these guys, when it came to, let's say, uh, Jameis Winston and Jarvis Landry and Chris Olave, for instance, they had the one drive against the Chargers in the preseason. I think, obviously, they looked fantastic during that. But... This was really the first time that you got all four of those players. And if you want to add in Michael Tom, or if you add in Michael Thomas, and if you want to add Alvin Kamara to that, five players out on the field at the same time, sort of figuring out what works for each of them. And so I think that some of it is the continuity, cohesion, the communication that they needed to build. And the other bit of it is just the, the sheer want that took place when you got into the fourth quarter when everything kind of clicked in. And defensively, you know, when the Saints play the Bucs, the D-line has dominated the Bucks' offensive line. And against the Falcons, it was kind of concerning. Gave up 200 rushing yards, had zero sacks. That can't happen on Sunday if they want to win this game. Are you concerned about the D-line at all? Yeah, I think you have a little bit of concern, particularly in the run game. I'm not super concerned about the passing game for this one. Just because you look back at Atlanta last week, the big focus when it came to Marcus Mariota wasn't necessarily getting after after him and getting pressure, it was containing him and keeping him inside. Now he still ran for over 70 yards, so not necessarily the ideal performance there, but that was the focus. So now you have somebody that's not as mobile in Tom Brady, but somebody that does get the ball out quickly. So that's where you need the interior push from the defensive line, guys like David Onyemata, Shai Tuttle, uh, some of these other guys that are going to be rotating within the uh, interior, including Contavia Street. They're going to need to get that pressure right up the middle, and they're going to be able to have to win in the run game there too. Against the Atlanta Falcons, they lost a lot of ground with the Atlanta Falcons being able to reset the offensive line on runs right up the middle. That's something that they can't allow with Leonard Fournette and, again, a better rushing attack with Tampa than what they faced against Atlanta. If the Saints want to win their fifth straight regular season with Tom Brady as the Bucs quarterback, what do they have to do on Sunday? Keys to victory for me are simple. On the offensive side for this New Orleans Saints team, they've got to get the run game going, a little bit of ball control, kind of the same thing that we saw when Dennis Allen was the interim head coach and they shut the Bucs out 9-0 to at Ray J, uh, Raymond Jane Stadium in Tampa Bay. But there's some question marks around the health of that running back room, so we'll have to see how all of that develops. On the defensive side, it's getting pressure with your front four on the defensive line. That way you can drop many players back in the coverage and take advantage of all the disguising and the sort of tricky things that Dennis Allen and this New Orleans Saints defense love to do, particularly against Tom Brady, which has proven to work in the past. You talked about the question marks. I have to ask you, is Alvin Kamara going to play on Thursday? He did not practice. Do you think he plays on Sunday? Do you think that was just kind of like a rest day for him? It could very well just be a rest day. We've seen the New Orleans Saints being very cautious with injuries over the course of the offseason. I don't think that's going to change going into the regular season. They've sort of 
innovated a new practice in terms of how they deal with things uh, around injury, especially with Matt Rea now as their director of sports science. That's kind of changed a little bit of their practice. So it could very well just be a rest day, but it's going to be wait and see uh, when it comes to Alvin Kamara for sure. You got a score prediction? Oh, I'm taking the New Orleans Saints to be able to win this one at home. I actually had this one as a loss preseason, but what I saw from that New Orleans Saints team in terms of their resilience in that fourth quarter and what we've seen from Michael Thomas in particular over the course of the entire offseason, I'm actually taking the Saints to win this one. I was looking at this one maybe being a 33 to 27. The Saints usually score in the 30s against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the Superdome. If they can do that again, they should be able to walk away with one. I got 27, 24 Saints, Saints money line people. Ross, tell everybody how they can follow you and watch you. Yeah, absolutely. So you can find the Locked on Saints podcast available wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. Just search Locked on Saints. You can find all of the written work as well over at USA Today Saints Wire and CrescentCitySports.com. One of the best people covering the Saints here. <laughs> Ross, thanks for joining us. Thanks, buddy. Pleasure.